other big problem that we have, as well as cities, <coughs> you will have noticed that um, we all move around a lot more than we used to. Your parents and your grandparents and your great-grandparents wouldn't have moved, wouldn't have had the ability to move around the planet like we do now. We take so much of it for granted. Something like flying, for example. We've only been flying for a little over a hundred years. Okay, that is that is a, a blink of an eye uh, in terms of human beings on the planet. So 1902, gosh, 1902, there was nobody in the air. The whole population of the planet was on the ground. 1902, there were two people in December who made it. Um, flying from Kitty Hawk, which is, where is Kitty Hawk? Around there somewhere. Um, and nowadays, just over 100 years later, at any one time, there are a million people flying. Just, just process that fact for a moment. At any one time, day or night, there are one million people at 30,000 feet. Now that is an extraordinary statistic. It's an extraordinary figure. Just try and comprehend the energy involved in keeping a million people in the air permanently. It's, an, it, it, it's unbelievable. And it's not, just, it's not just things like aviation fuel and the jets themselves that fly around. It's the infrastructure that, that, that we need to make it happen. So it's the airports, it's the roads, it's the transport links. In 100 years, just over a human lifetime, we have completely changed everything. There is nowhere on planet Earth now which is more than a day away. Later on tonight, I'm flying from London to Rwanda. You know, and it's, what is it? It's like an eight hour flight. It's nothing. And that, that, would, that was a journey that would have taken months for our ancestors. So the way that we, the way that, that we, that we travel is, has changed everything. And of course, it comes down to the, the, the sustainability question as well. Well, how do we do this? At what point do we, do, do we say, well, we can't do this anymore? Because like I say, we live in a closed system. There's nothing coming in. We have to rethink it. So uh, two days ago, day before yesterday, I heard a story which really intrigued me. And I went out uh, to film it for you specially. Um, because a bit like the elephant in the room with cities, the elephant in the room with aviation is, well, you know, how do we, how, wh where do we go from here? Um, <coughs> that's one of the A380s. I'll just very quickly, I won't show you the whole clip. There are now around a million people airborne at any one time. There you go. That A380, that wingspan of the A380, by the way, that was the length of the Wright brothers' first flight. So in a hundred years, we've gone from that you know, 30 meters, that's how far we can fly to building things like A380s. I spent a lot of time working with them um, in the aviation industry over the last few years. Um, the aviation industry is coming up with solutions to make it more sustainable, to make uh, aircraft uh, less, using less energy. One way, for example, this is, the, this is a Boeing building a Dreamliner. You might have heard of the Dreamliner. Using new materials, modern materials, like carbon fiber. So rather than using aluminium, we can now use carbon fiber to construct aircraft. They're lighter, and because they're lighter, they use less fuel. So that is a good thing. Um, and of course, people like you are going to come up with new materials that are going to be even lighter, and new designs that are going to make aircraft even more efficient. So that's one good way. But this is where I was the day before yesterday. I went out to Stuttgart in Germany, because I, I heard about a guy called Len. Do you know Len? Me neither. I'd never heard of Len. But Len, my new friend Len, had, he'd made an electric aeroplane. And I'm like, how do you make an electric aeroplane? I mean, I've heard of electric cars, but electric cars, they kind of go on the road and you, know, you run out of batteries and you plug them in. And you, Tesla, have you heard of Tesla? You might have heard of Tesla. Yeah, exactly. Um, but this guy's built an electric aeroplane. I, I didn't understand how he could do that. So I went out to Stuttgart to meet him. And this is it. This is one of the, it's not the first electric aeroplane, but it's one of the first that actually flies. This is a prototype. And you'll notice it has this, um, well, I'll show you because I did a little piece to camera for you. Hi, everyone at the Ritchie Lecture. I am just outside Stuttgart. Now, we've looked at the 1902 glider, the very first time we took to the skies. And in just over 100 years, we've gone from that to where we are now, which is at any one time a million people in the air, which obviously takes an extraordinary amount of energy. But what about the future? Well, I've come here because I wanted to look at this. This is a prototype of one of the very, very first 
electric planes, a plane that actually runs on batteries. It's beautifully streamlined as you can see from the wings here. It's incredibly light and the way it works is just behind uh, the cockpit here in this section is about 300 kilograms of batteries which power this, this whacking great big propeller you can see at the back. Uh, obviously you couldn't have that on the front because it would hit the ground. Uh, and the exciting thing is, I'm about to go up in it. So yeah, the, uh, what they didn't tell me, and I didn't realise this, and I, I'm like, can I go up in it? And he was like, yeah, yeah, you can go up in it. Um, he didn't tell me that it, it's an experimental aircraft, this, okay, so it's not actually licensed. You know, there's a lot of forms you have to fill out, you know, in health and safety forms. And, and so they wouldn't actually let me go up in it. I, I had to sign all kinds of waivers to say that if I, you know, if I died, then I wouldn't sue them. And so, but anyway, I thought it'd be worth it. Um, and the other thing I didn't realise, and this is a fact, that if you are going up in an experimental, non-licensed, uh, registered aircraft, you have to wear a parachute. So um, I'm like, do I really want to go on this flight? <laughs> so there I am with my parachute on. Um, I've never done, well, I have done parachuting, but I'm like, is this safe? And he's like, yes. Len was very nice, very German. He's, yes, it's fine. We, the, the whole plane runs on laptop batteries. 6,000 laptop batteries. I don't know about you, but my laptop batteries are rubbish. So anyway, we had a go. So there we are in my parachute. I'll give you a little, a, a little look at what it's like. Here we go. This is... So they let me actually have a go, which is great. And uh, I tell you what, taking off in it, you can feel the power. It doesn't feel uh, uh, in any way sluggish. It's an amazing thing of being up here. I'm thinking that we're already up here thanks to the power of a few laptop batteries. And if you look at that aircraft there, well, he's using traditional fuel. Maybe this is the future.